transition to formal combat or operations in Iraq. Sergeant Maggart was killed on August 22nd, three days after the last combat brigade left Iraq. Our next guest says this proves that we're going to see more of an escalation than a drawdown. Joining us now from Clute, Texas, is Republican Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman Paul, welcome to the program. It's Brian Sullivan. You wrote that Brian, not only you. will our operations likely not change much, but that costs may actually go up because of the increased use of private contractors. Explain your position. That's right. They're, they're admitting they're keeping 50,000 troops there. That's a lot. And uh, they will be armed and they can get killed. But they have also 100,000 contractors there and they're admitting that these uh, numbers may increase. But even those troops that they're bringing out, uh, Obama was pretty clear that they may go into Afghanistan or elsewhere that he allows, uh, you know, this gives him more leverage to go into other areas. So overall, the, there's no chance that uh, this announcement here this last week has anything to do with reducing the expenditures. Uh, and, you know, we talk about uncertainties in the marketplace, you know, domestic uncertainties about fiscal policy and tax policies. But what about the uncertainty of our foreign policy that's an overhang, you know, and it goes on and on. And uh, this is a drain our, on our economy. So I see it as a serious problem. Do you believe that the troops that remain remain more in harm's way? And it's not as if the enemy there is going to say, oh, that's not a combat troop. I'm not going to plant an IED. Now there are fewer soldiers there to protect the ones that are left. That's right, and uh, they, they make it sound like, uh, you know, the mission has been so-called accomplished. I think this is like mission accomplished second time around, uh, even though those words weren't used. But, no, I, I think it's very dangerous over, over there, and I think they'll get, continue to be killed, and uh, somebody might want to just make the point, you know, if uh, we make an example of them. You know, but the whole thing is, is there's no intent to really leave ever, you know, for the indefinite future. We have this embassy that's bigger than the Vatican. We have like 40 bases as of now, and we plan to keep those bases there. Uh, Al-Qaeda has actually moved into Iraq. Al-Qaeda wasn't there before the war started. And uh, of course, we were told Al-Qaeda was there and they were participants in 9-11. had nothing to do with 9-11. This has been a tremendous boost, uh, you know, to Osama bin Laden because this proves his point, you know, that uh, we're over there for occupation it just uh, it just stirs up the hatred and the radicals so I see this uh, our presence there going in was bad uh, staying but, there is bad and I don't like to see the American people deceived in thinking that we've had a major turning point but congressman here. we are but we are there now so what should we do should we as you wrote most people when they hear the end of the war think all the troops are gone 50,000 remain yeah. what do we do now as a policy, uh, our policy should be we should come home. I mean, we're admitting now that they don't need our combat troops. Just go one step further. Uh, but but it, it's a mess. But it's 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 a mess of our our creation. You, the strongest politician over there is Al Sadr. Al Sadr is a sh strong Shiite aligned with Iran. And, and, you know, it just seems like the more we get involved in trying to take care of our national security interests, the worse we make our national security. So we've essentially, in many ways, have turned Iraq over to, to be a close ally of Iran. And people say, well, now we can never leave forever. Well, when are we going to quit? You know, if everything we do makes it worse for us, both financially and for national security purposes, the only thing I can see is overall policy is wrong. George Bush was right in the year 2000 when he said we should have a humble foreign policy, we shouldn't be policemen of the world, and mm -hmm. we shouldn't be in nation building. And, and, and that, is, that is exactly the foreign policy I like, and yet we have uh, embarked on another course. Both uh, the leaderships of both yeah. parties uh, follow this involvement around the world. The Russians learned a very hard lesson about the Afghan people, right? That Do you believe true, that, that and we're ramping them. up there, <laughs> we're ramping up there, and maybe it's needed, the Taliban, cruel oppressive to their own citizens but will we ever leave afghanistan and if so when we let's say we do at some point do you believe it will simply tumble back into what it was before we got there 
probably, but the Taliban hasn't been a threat to us. We used to go to war because they threatened us, but the Taliban are local people. They're not al-Qaeda. They don't send people outside their borders. All they care about is occupation. They don't want foreigners. They were our allies when the Russians were the occupiers, and we were supporting the radicals. As a matter of fact, we even, uh, even supported some of the training of the radical Islamists. And uh, it, we're not going to conquer uh, Afghanistan. And the, because we'll leave and they'll drift back into some problems that they've had. But they've had periods of time. If you go back into the 50s and the 60s, Afghanistan wasn't that bad of a country. It was rather calm uh, compared to what's happened since the Russians were in, the Soviets were in, and since we've been in there. But this has been going on literally for centuries, yeah. and outsiders always want to take and, over and Afghanistan. I'll wrap it up, I'll wrap it up it, with this, Congressman, very quickly. Do you believe you can, quote unquote, win a war against an area? that does not have a strong central government? No, not unless you sacrifice every single thing that we have, our liberties and all our wealth, and then after that's all consumed, we lose anyway. So no, you can't win. You can't win that. You can win the hearts and minds of other people if you set a good example, you trade with them, and you talk to them. Look, we are winning the hearts and minds of the people of the Vietnam but not because we went over there and killed a bunch of them. It's because we left there and we started trading with them and talking with them. Just think now uh, how westernized and capitalized, capitalistic the, the Chinese have become. You don't win these battles with war. That's been my argument. And we have a great message, but actually our message here at home about freedom and prosperity in the marketplace and sound economics, we're even losing that at home. So if we work harder on a sound, healthy economy here with mm. sound money, I think more people would look to us and try to emulate okay. us, and we wouldn't have to try to force our way on other people around the world. Congressman Ron Paul, sir, we appreciate your views tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.